Hi everyone! In this video, I will show you how to insert a visualization created using Vega into a Power BI report with the help of the NAP Custom Visual. Let's say we have this warming striped visualization created in Vega Editor and we want to insert it into a new Power BI report. How to do that? First of all, we need to import the NAP Custom Visual into the report. So, insert Visual Gallery. Get more visuals, the nap, add, and now the DNAP custom visual will be available in uh, the list of visuals in the report. Okay, here again, insert visual gallery, the list of visuals, and we have the nap here. We can insert the nap visual into the page. Now I will resize and move it a little bit. The next step is to add uh, some data. For this visualization, we already have uh, all the data in this CSV file. So I just, just can copy this uh, URL and I will go to Power Query to import the data from uh, new source text or CSV. I will use the URL to get the data from the CSV file. This is it. And now the preview is in Power Query. It depends on your settings view, either will have the following steps already automatically applied, or we'll need to manually apply use first rows as headers and change data types here. It's going to be fixed a decimal number. And I will apply the changes to load the data into Power BI data model. And now the data is in Power BI. You can see global temp table is available here. And we can add the data columns into the DNAP visual. So I will open build a visual pane and I will drag and drop both fields here. I don't need any summarization here, so I will disable it for both fields. And now the data columns are both uh, available in uh, the NAP visual. So let's go to more options and edit. In the following videos, I will tell you more about what is the NAP template. We don't have any the NAP templates now. What we have here is just uh, Vega JSON code. It's not a the NAP template. It's just uh, a Vega visualization. So we don't need existing template option here. We need Vega option and empty because we will be using an empty specification uh, tab to insert our own. Uh, Vega code. So I am going to select all and copy here in Vega editor and I will create an empty specification here. It's not exactly empty. We can remove these few rows and insert what we have just copied. Now you can see there are some buttons here inside of uh, the NAP editor. Uh, about some of them I will tell you about in the following videos. Right now, we will need uh, this one, format JSON. It's just to format our JSON code. Let me add some blank rows. When I click format JSON, it just reformats the code, removes the blank rows, uh, and so on. It's a bit different uh, than in Vega Editor, because in Vega Editor, we will use uh, Alt Shift F uh, shortcut. And in the NAP Editor, we will use Font Alt R shortcut. It's a bit different, but uh, you probably will be able to, to remember both shortcuts and switch between them. Depends on what editor you are using at the moment. Another button is to apply auto apply changes. It's a toggle button, so when it's enabled, any changes like let's say I'm going to change visualization height to 100 pixels and they will be 
automatically apply it to the visualization here. We don't have yet the visualization. Uh, so nothing happens here. But again, when this button is enabled, whatever changes you made in the code automatically will be applied to the this uh, preview here. Uh, it's the same that in Vega editor we have auto run by default, or we can switch to manual if the visualization is more complicated and uh, not fast enough for real time code editing with uh, redriving uh, the visualization uh, automatically. So again, in Vega editor, it's uh, usually by default in auto and in the nap visual by default, I think it's disabled and you need to enable auto apply changes if you want to see all the changes uh, in real time. And if visualization is not fast enough for real time code editing, you can just make whatever changes you need in the code and then click apply changes button to apply them uh, manually. So what we need for now is just a specification tab, config tab, tab renames blank, we don't need it for now. I will talk about settings uh, in the following videos and uh, these three buttons and uh, we don't need remapping of the fields uh, for now. But uh, why we don't see our warming stripes chart here? Well, you can read here on the data tab that the specified data set currently has no data to display. But why if we already inserted our two columns into the values field. Well, let's go here to the data property and you can see we have our data set table, but it says that data should be imported from the URL from the CSV file, but the NAP custom visual can't access the external CSV files. It just has no access uh, to the external data sources. There is a standalone version of the NAP where it's possible, but uh, normally we won't use standalone version. We will use uh, the version installed from the Visual Store using Get More Visuals button here. And uh, we don't need the data to be imported from the CSV file. We already imported this data in our Power BI data model. So we need to connect our Vega visualization to this data, not to the external CSV file. It means we can remove this CSV format properties and we can remove this URL. We will just keep name, data set, and let me click apply changes and you can see data is available and visualization is perfectly fine. Why we use the name data set here? What does it mean? Data set is just a word reserved for this case. If you are creating a table named data set in your Vega code, it will tell the NAP that the NAP has to take this data from the data model, from the values field on a build a visual pane, and load this data into the data set table inside of Vega. The data set is just a word, a name that tells the NAP what data to load into this table. What is also possible here in the data section of Vega specification is you can apply some additional data transformations to data that you have already loaded into the data set table. For example, let's say we want to create one more table with a subset of data from 1959 to 1980. We want just this year in that new table, not the entire data set. How we can do that? We will just add one more data table, name, data, baseline period. It will be based on source data set. So when we define a new name and say source data set, name of already existing data table, it tells uh, to Vegas that 
it has to create just a copy of a dataset table with a new name data baseline period. Let's check here. We have dataset dataset and we have a new data baseline period table with exactly the same data. So it's just a copy. But we want to filter and get only 1959 to 1980 data in this uh, data baseline period table. We can add some transformation. Transform. And our transformation is going to be type filter. Filter. Expression. Datum. Year greater or equal a 1951 and datum year less or equal 1980 and let me fix this typo it transform but it has to be transform and now apply changes surely nothing changed here because we just added one more data table but it's not used anywhere in the visualization but you can see here on the data tab that uh, we have data baseline period table and it contains data from 1951 to 1980 only for our baseline period. So we just created additional data table using filter data transformation. These data transformations inside of Vega are really useful. I use them often. Uh, let me switch to Vega documentation to show you what other data transformations are available. You can see that uh, there is a long list of available data transformations here. Some of them you will need only to create uh, certain types of uh, visualizations. For example, there is a stack visualization which is useful when you want to build uh, a second bar chart and there are many other data transformations uh, that you will need only for specific uh, visualizations but in most of my visualizations i almost uh, always uh, need uh, a few data transformations from this list such as the filter which we already use it to get our baseline uh, subset of the years one more thing I probably have to explain here. Let me switch back. Transform type filter means that for every row in uh, the data set, we are going to check if year field for this row is greater or equal 1951 and if it's less or equal 1980. So this is why we need datum here. Datum in this case contain, contains two properties, year and temp, the field available in our data table. You can apply more than one data transformation to one table. So I can add the next data transformation here after the filter transformation. And the next transformation will use the table already with all previous transformation steps already applied. So if I will try to apply something here, let's say it go, it's going to be one more filter. Pression. And something is going to be here. For now it will be datum year equal 1950 in here okay now there are no typos in the code you can see that we have our data set and our data baseline period is empty why it's empty because the second filter is applied to the data with all previous transformations already applied. So 
this filter excluded all data before 1951 and the second filter we are trying to get 1950 data which is not already available it was filtered out so in this way you can apply many different data transformations to your data table let's go back here the filter is one very useful transformation which allows you to create various subset of data when you're creating a complex visualization let's say you want to make the entire dashboard uh, using uh, only one DNAP visual you will need a lot of filter transformations you will need uh, most likely often to use uh, aggregate transformation if you want to add some additional data aggregation inside of your Vega visualization so filter aggregate uh, also i often use uh, extend uh, visual transformation to get uh, just mean and max values uh, in some field extend transformation just creates a signal that contains minimal and maximal values from a certain field in the data table so it's filter aggregate uh, extend I think this is the most useful one. Also, formula, formula data transformation allows you to add new columns or to change existing columns by applying some calculations. For example, let's copy it. Go to here. I will remove this second filter. I will remove both filters. And the type is going to be formula, alt R. Uh, column name is going to be just test and expression is going to be based on the existing columns so it will be datum temp let's say if datum temp uh, is uh, above zero then value is going to be one otherwise it's going to be zero we need to go to the next pages and you can see that we have zero if it's below zero value and we have one for values above zero so you can use any formulas here to add additional columns or you can use name of existing column here in the s property to replace the existing column with updated version of this column based on some uh, expression so the most useful transformation are filter, aggregate, extend, formula. All other aggregations are also very useful, but again, they are specific for specific chart types. Uh, and uh, these uh, four transformations are useful almost in any visualization. That's it uh, about uh, inserting visualization into Power BI and loading the data. And uh, now you can see that the visualization is in Power BI report connected to our data model, which is just one simple table. And if the data in the CSV file will be updated, you can refresh the report and the chart will be updated.